Hey guys, Uncle Ray, welcome to another episode of the Crypto Bellwether. On this channel, we cut through the hype and the noise, and I give you the non-biased information you can use to hopefully capitalize on the biggest opportunity in history. And in my opinion, that's his current bull run. Now, I do my research. For me, I have a financial background, and I share with my community. I don't care what you guys buy, but I do care about misinformation, and I fight that on this channel. Now, one thing that just came out during the Swell conference with Ripple was they awarded a blockchain auto like an award for like the best new tech. And they just announced a partnership with Auto Blockchain for their custody services. So I dove into that because I trade XRP every single day. And I looked around and no one's talking about it. How is that? Well, that's because most people want to spin everything into a positive. But if you follow Ripple and their roadmap and their business model, they are moving away from specializing in payments. They pretty much, from what I can tell, gave up on it. And they understand that stable coins and tokenized assets and like the custody service, services is what the money is where the money's gonna be made. Now, a lot of people equate every new announcement with Ripple to XRP. And, you know, I've done a video and I'll leave a link, you know, at the end of this video where you should watch it. But guys, somewhere around 70, 75% of all of Ripple's services have nothing to do with XRP. And the projects that do have something to do with XRP it's not really that bullish normally for retail. Now, why do I say that? Well, banks and all of Ripple's customers, they don't buy retail XRP. They pay Ripple to use their supply. That's not that bullish. And that's why every single day you hear news about Ripple, but XRP isn't moving. And they want to put that off on the SEC, but it's not that. It's because Ripple is not XRP. Now, don't shoot the messenger. And go ahead and hit the like button. Let's talk about this announcement. And why would Ripple make partnerships when XRP and XRPL, it, you know, XR, it is a layer one and supposed to be amazing tech? Well, there are better alternatives out there. And even Ripple knows that. Now, that doesn't mean that XRP doesn't have its great use case and the XRPL isn't a good technology, but that doesn't mean that it relates to XRP being a good investment. Now, the first thing before I talk about auto is, you know, they just announced that they're using Axelar as a bridge protocol for their EVM sidechain. Now, why would they do that when everyone knows, supposedly, that XRP is the best bridge currency out there? Well, guys, Going from the XRPL and the XRP ecosystem into the Ethereum ecosystem isn't an easy task. And when you use Axelar, it's a lot better than using XRP or any other alternative. Now, in using partner with Axelar, they can wrap XRP and make it EVM compatible. Now, here's why it's important, guys. No matter what people think, the future of tokenized assets are, is, at least for the next bull run or two, is going to be produced from the Ethereum ecosystem. Like 80% of all tokenized assets have been tokenized on Ethereum. Now, that may be a project like Auto that is EVM compatible or built on Ethereum, but Ethereum gets its piece of the pot, and it's very important because in the future, like with custody services, these projects, no matter which blockchain they're launched on, and whoever does the custody, they're going to need access to run in and out of the Ethereum rails for the most part, for whatever that's worth. Now, when I looked into the auto partnership with Ripple, I got to give a shout out to Erie Crypto. She's great, and she did a she posted a, a video on Twitter 
and I want you to hear what the founder of Auto Blockchain says about the tech. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you exactly why Ripple is using Auto Blockchain for its custody services. Very excited about Auto and the blockchain. It's a um, permissioned chain and it is being specifically built to enable your original assets to remain on the chain that they're in. Um, so think about that, guys. That is amazing tech. Now, hear me out. And this the reason you need to understand the big picture in the tech is so you'll know not to hodl these projects and you'll know to take profits. Guys, I can't be more bullish, but you don't get rich having misinformation and thinking that you have the best project, the best tech out there, and you really don't understand the big picture and how this tech is going to be used and what moves the needle. And the future is tokenized assets. Everything's going to be tokenized. But the biggest winners of that are going to be, it's going to be the banks and Wall Street. They have all the assets to tokenize. If BlackRock and JP Morgan just tokenize, for example, their customers that they have under ass, uh, their customers' assets that they have under management, they will definitely dominate for forever. There's no catching them. They have the customers, and Ripple understands that, guys. I can't be more bullish on Ripple, and I have no doubt Ripple will probably be a Fortune 100 corporation. I don't know in the next say 20 years, but that doesn't mean that XRP is a good investment, and I don't think. It is. You know, it may do okay, but it didn't make a new all time high in the last bull run. I don't see it making a new all time high in this bull run. And if it does, I couldn't imagine why XRP would hit $5. Don't believe the hype. Look at the math, look at the tokenomics, and look at the demand. There's not the demand at all for retail XRP. Again, there's a lot of demand for Ripple's supply. But that's how Ripple makes money. Ripple uses XRP exactly how it's supposed to be. It's a commodity. It's not a security. And what do you do with a commodity? You use that commodity to create services or to create things. No different than a builder using lumber to build a house and make money. Doesn't mean that lumber is going to go way up. Now, for whatever that's worth, think about this. Here's what the future looks like. And this is what SWIFT's next uh, plan is. You know, if you haven't heard, the SWIFT so-called banking reset has already occurred. I'll leave a link again at the end. You should watch that video as well. And they are moving trillions of dollars. And all those ISO tokens are pretty much irrelevant at this point. They will be linked into uh, SWIFT. And Link right now is being used as the gateway, and Hedera is being used as the uh, census, consensus mechanism, which is amazing. And I'll, t I'll touch base on that in a second. But I'll go ahead and tell you. Uh, the future is, as it sits right now, when everything's tokenized, is atomic settlement. And basically, you tokenize, say, your money, and you tokenize, say, a deed in a house, and you put uh, all the information in those smart contracts and you use atomic settlement, which basically, you know, runs that asset into the ledger. It can use any rails. And I believe most tokens like XRP, XLM, or whatever are not going to be needed because when they tokenize those assets, they're going to run on probably the bank's rails or rails like Venmo where no tokens needed for whatever that's worth. Now. I'm getting a little sidetracked, but I, if you um, are into real world assets, which I've made a lot of videos and I'll leave another one at the end. Guys, this is some great tech because this is permission. That's another thing. Everyone's always talking about private, but when it's permission, it's more controlled. And guess what? It's more centralized. That decentralized nature is not going to be the future, not straight decentralization. And if you disagree with that, I want you to think about something. If you had money to pay cash for a house and it was tokenized with atomic settlement and you could tokenize your, your money 
and tokenize the deed of that house, would you mash that button if it was totally decentralized? No, you wouldn't. Because if you mess up and maybe the money didn't get there or the deed didn't get there, there'd be no one to call. That's not the future. There, there's going to be a lot of aspects of decentralization, especially moving $10, $1,000, maybe even $10,000. But no one wants to send a million dollars decentralized. They want to have something like, say, uh, what is it? Uh, Galaxy Digital. Galaxy Digital is one of the Wall Street companies that are dominating real world assets. They have their own rails, no token, unfortunately, and it's uh, insured for a billion dollars. So you can use their rails and I can tokenize my money and you can tokenize your deed and we could do that transfer. But if it doesn't work out, it's centralized. We could call Galaxy Digital. You're going to be able to call, say, Bank of America or whoever. That's the future, guys. So anyway, if you have an interest in, in this tech and, and understanding why Ripple would use it, go to their website, surf around, guys. Like he said, the future of everything being tokenized, whether it's tokenized on Solana, who just had a big announcement about tokenized, or XLM, or XRP, or Ethereum, or whatever, where are you going to park it? You're going to use JP Morgan, uh, maybe Ripple, whoever, and if you use this blockchain, which is why Ripple chose it, it can stay on that rail and they can put it in their custody and they don't have to go to, you know, three or four different bridges and put it at risk. And it's permission, that way it can be controlled. See, these permission blockchains, guys, will probably end up being insured. Anyway, I know I'm rambling on, but guys, the only reason I tell you this it's not that I'm trying to FUD XRP or anything else, but if you're tired of misinformation and if you own XRP or uh, and, and can't understand how it's so bullish and all this stuff is amazing, do some deep dives, non-biased research, and, and research the big players in the world who are dominating crypto. When it comes to real-world assets, like 75 80% of everything goes through Ethereum, whether we like it or not. And that's not going to change in this bull run or any other bull run. And for whatever it's worth, I highly recommend you consider selling all your altcoins in this bull run. And, you know, I don't sell my Bitcoin, but I also don't hold altcoins long term. Hodling crypto is dangerous. Look at XRP. Look at XLM. Seven years, no new all time high, IOTA. I, it, the list is endless. 90% of all projects never make a new high in the second bull run. The third one, it's almost never. The fourth one, of course not. Why would it? So keep that in mind. The probability of you holding an asset, a crypto asset, into the bear market when this bull runs over, say by the end of 2025, we know that you have a almost a 100% chance that it will dump over 85%. And you have a 90% chance that it will never come back to hit another new all-time high, for whatever that's worth. So let me know what you think in the comment section. Hit the like button. And guys, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's only $250 for three Zoom and phone calls. If you need some help understanding this tech, you want some honest opinion, you want some access to some good research, or want to talk about your portfolio, or get a better understanding of how the dollar cost average in and out, or how to compare projects, reach out. I'll leave a link down below. But in the meantime, let me know what you think and come back and be part of this community. Remember, guys, this is not FUD. This is reality. And if you don't want to understand the downside, you're going to get wrecked. And remember, if the majority were right, the majority would be rich. And one last thing, if you don't take profits, you'll become the profits. All right, guys. Take care.